Hello friends, you're welcome to the Search the Scriptures lesson. Yes, we're still on the series on the book of Numbers. And we're looking at three chapters of the book of Numbers, chapter 22, 23, and 24. If you have your Bible, you turn with me to the book of Numbers, chapter 22. Before we begin, let's say a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your love towards us. We thank you for everything you've been doing for us, how you've been helping us go through your word, teaching us, guiding us into all truth. Lord, we ask, as we look at your word, we ask that you open our eyes, as you opened the eyes of Balaam to see the angel Lord, we ask that you open our eyes to see you and for you to point if there is any perverseness in us. Lord, through your word, point it out. Teach us. Speak to us. And Lord, we ask again that as you open his eyes the second time to see the plan the blessedness, the future of the nation Israel. Lord, we ask that you open our eyes to see how you see us. To see the plans you have for us, your promises. Lord, do it for us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Once again, you're welcome to the search, the scriptures. And um, turn with me to the book of Numbers, Numbers chapter 22. Our text, Numbers chapter 22, 23, and 24. Now, I read from 22 verse 1. And the children of Israel set forward and pitched in the plains of Moab on the side of Jordan by Jericho. And Balak, the son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was so afraid of the people, because they were many. And Moab was distressed because of the children of Israel. And Moab said unto the elders of Midian, Now shall this company lick up all that are round about us, as the ox licketh up the grass of the field and Balak the son of Zippor was king of the Moabites at that time and he sent messengers therefore unto Balaam the son of Beor to Pethor which is by the river of the land of the children of his people to call him saying behold there is a people come out of Egypt behold they cover the face of the earth and they abide over against me. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, cause me these people, for they are too mighty for me. Peradventure I shall prevail, that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I would that he whom thou blessed is blessed, and he whom thou cursed is cursed. We are looking at the topic of this study, Balaam's covetousness and prophecies. Balaam's covetousness and prophecies. The defeat of Og, king of Bashan, and Sihon, the king of the Amorites, with their people at Edrai, and the possession of their lands by the children of Israel, brought distress to the Moabites. When Israelites proceeded in their journey, they would have bypassed the land of Moab without any confrontation because of the divine instruction to spare it. God instructed them that the land of the Moabites are not theirs. He said, I have not given it unto thee. In Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 9. But Balak, a king of Moab, 
hired Balaam to curse them. Balaam's covetous attitude made him to disobey divine instructions. His ill-advised adventure and prophecies form the focus of this study. But it is encouraging to note that while the enemy hashed the plot to curse Israel, the faithful God who watches over his people never sleep nor slumber. He promptly rose to intervene against the diabolic plot of Balak and Balaam from being executed. Israel could not be cursed as God had declared them blessed. Believers should not be afraid of the evil plots of the wicked. Say ye not a confederacy. To all them to whom these people shall say, a confederacy, neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. Let him be your fear. When you fear the Lord, you keep his statutes and his commandments. He stands and fights for you. Now in this topic, this study, we are considering three points. Point number one, plots to cause Israel and Balaam's covetousness. Point number two, preservation and blessedness of the chosen. And point number three, prophecies concerning Christ's kingdom and calamities of the hidden. Prophecies concerning Christ's kingdom and calamities of the hidden. Now let's come to point number one, plots to cause Israel and Balaam's covetousness. The plot to cause Israel and, Elam, and Balaam's covetousness. Come to the text in Numbers chapter 22 and I read from verse 2. And Balak the son of Zippor saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. So Israel took the lands of the Amorites and that brought great distress to the king of Moab, Balak. The Moabites were in great distress. And that's when they sent a message to the Midians, to the Midianites, and said, These people, in verse 4, And Moabite said to the elders of Midian, Now shall this company lick up all that are round about us, as the ox licketh up the grass of the field. And Balak the son of Zippor was king of the Moabites at that time. He sent messengers, therefore, unto Balaam, the son of Beor, to Bethel, which is by the river of the land of the children of his people, to call him, saying, Behold, there is a people come out from Egypt. Behold, they cover the face of the earth, and they abide over against us. Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me these people, for they are too mighty for me. Peraventure, I shall prevail, that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I would that he whom thou blessed is blessed, and he whom thou cursed is cursed. And they were afraid. They said, peradventure, they would smite us, take our land, destroy our nation. And Moab, the king, Balak, the elders, every one of them were ignorant of the plan of God over their lives. They never knew that the Lord said to the Israelites in Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 9, And the Lord said unto me, 
distress not the Moabites, neither contend with them in battle, for I will not give thee of their land for a possession, because I have given her unto the children of lords for a possession. So they were ignorant of this plan of God over their lives. So fear came into their lives. And that is how Christians, believers, sometimes live their lives. When you are ignorant of the plan and the promises of God, you tend to walk in fear. In verse 6, he says, Come now, therefore, I pray thee, and cost me these people. So the fear caused them to call on Balaam, to curse the nation of Israel. The fear of the unknown. This is what it causes. It breeds fear. The fear of the unknown, because there is no faith, in the known. The greatest privilege of a man is knowing the all-knowing. When you know God that knows the future, that knows the end from the beginning, you fear not. All you have to do is lean on his word, rest on his promises. So Balak called on Balaam to come curse the nation of Israel. In verse 6, Come now, therefore, I pray thee, curse me these people, for they are too mighty for me. Peradventure I shall prevail that we may smite them, and that I may drive them out of the land. For I would that he whom thou blessed is blessed. And he whom thou cursest is cursed. And that should not be found in the New Testament believers. James admonished the believers and he said to them in James chapter 3 verse 10, Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. These things ought not to be so. As a New Testament believer, these things ought not to be so. You don't say, I'm angry and I will rain the curse on you. I'll curse you. Do you know who I am? I'm a man of God. And if I open my mouth and curse you, it will definitely come to pass. These things ought not to be so. In verse 11, Does a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Verse 12, Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. These things ought not to be so. And in verse 7, And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand. And they came unto Balaam. And speak unto him the words of Balak. You know, Balaam was not a prophet of God. He was called a prophet. In the scriptures, the scriptures mentioned many prophets, false prophets, the prophets of the Most High God, the prophet of Baal. At this point, looking at the, the man Bela, Balaam was not a prophet from God. The Bible even called them a soothsayer. In Joshua chapter 13, 
and read from verse 22. It says, And Balaam also, the son of Beor, the soothsayer, the soothsayer, was not a prophet of God. That is why the elders of Medium and Moab went to him with what? The reward of divination. The word divination is to inquire and not from the Most High, to inquire from demons, evil spirits, familiar spirits. The word divination, they came with the reward of divination. If you look at Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 10, he says, There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or any observer of times, or any enchanter, or a witch. Verse 11, or a charmer, or a consultant with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. Come back to the text in Numbers chapter 22. And verse 8 says, And he said unto them, Lodge here this night, and I will bring you words again, as the Lord shall speak unto me. And the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. Since the spirits within him, or the demonic spirits guiding him, so directed him to the Lord. We have no part in this. Go and ask the Lord. And he said to the people, I have to go and call from the Lord. And God said unto Balaam, Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. Balaam said to the people, This is what the Lord said, that I will not go with you. And the elders took the words of Balaam to their king, Balak. And Balak sent more um, honorable men back to him. High-ranking officers back to him. To increase his uh, rewards of divination. And this is what they said when they came back to him in verse 17 for i will promote thee unto very great honor and i will do whatsoever thou sayest unto me come therefore i pray thee cause me this people this is what many people face in life we are christians we are believers temptation will definitely come even the bible says and the devil left him for a season <laughs> after jesus overcame the devil satan left him for a season I'm trying to tell you that temptation will definitely come again just be ready hold firm the word of god make sure you're always abiding in his word and they came again with greater offer to entice him, to tempt him. And Balaam answered and said unto the servants of Balak, If Balak would give me his house full of silver and gold, I cannot go beyond the word of the Lord my God to do less or more he would not move to the left or the right he said neither would i do more or less and you want to raise your thumb up for Bilam at this point but he 
went on to say now therefore i pray you tarry ye also this night that i may know what the lord will say unto me more why did balak go back to inquire from the lord again i thought he said i will not do more or less the word of the lord is yea and amen and these words young believers christians go through are you a young lady and a man has asked your hand in marriage and you've prayed about it and the lord has said no even without praying you know this person is an unbeliever remember the commandments of god be ye not unequally yoked with unbelievers you know the scriptures and you said no to this person you said i don't think you're the person the lord is not leading me to you and the young man left you for a while was still around you still sent you texts sent you gifts send enticing caring messages to you probably he wakes you up with his messages his calls and try to show you reason why you should accept him again and you come to the lord and you say lord this person is still here i see him respond to church activities He's not born again well but i believe i'll be able to change him and you see the young lady probably going back to the lord to hear from the lord to inquire of the lord why because you see yourself getting attached emotionally to this person be very careful what the Lord has said at the beginning stands. That is the perfect will of God. In Ezekiel chapter 14, and I read from verse, verse 2. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their hearts and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? The Lord said, no, he's not the person. But because of the, the care, the gifts, you see yourself bending back to him. And you're going back to the Lord to hear what the Lord is saying. You're coming to the Lord with the idol in your heart. In verse 4, he says, therefore speak unto them. And say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idol in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idol. You know, sometimes when the Lord reveals things to you, and you go back to him he sees your heart sometimes you really want to be sure is the lord really speaking what is the lord really saying he knows what you're asking and he sees the motive of your heart are you really asking me because you really want to know my will and you want to stand by my will or are you really asking because you really have an idol in your heart he will answer you according to your heart And Bilak heard all that they said, I will promote you. Whatever you say I should do, I will do. Just come. And Bilam went back to the Lord. And inquired of the Lord. And the Lord said to him, If the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. For yet the word which I shall say unto thee, thou shalt do. And Bilam rose up 
in the morning and saddled his ass and went with the princes of Moab. He saddled his ass and he got to a point where the angel of the Lord stood in the way. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place where was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with a staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto Balaam, What have I done unto thee that thou hast smitten me these three times? And Balaam said unto the ass, Because thou hast mocked me, I would there were a sword in my hand, for now would I kill thee. Balaam was conversing with the ass without realizing that he was speaking with an ass. He was filled with rage, anger, he was drunken with anger. He was not reasoning right anymore. Speaking to an ass, and the ass said, Am I, am I not dying? Have I acted like this? And when the ass was speaking, the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam and he saw the angel. Verse 31, Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way. And he saw drawn in his hand and he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Wherefore hast thou smitten thy ass these three times? Behold, I went out to withstand thee, because thy way is perverse before me. Because thy way is perverse before me. This is love. Sometimes the Lord stands in the way to hinder us from sinning against him. He stands in the way to help us, to make us see reasons not to go ahead with that wedding, with that business deal, with that meeting, or with that action. The Lord stood in the way of Balaam, in the same way he stood in the way of Jonah. And the Lord stood on the way and says, Because thy way is perverse before me. And Balaam said to the angel, I have sinned. For I knew not that thou stoodest in the way against me. Now, therefore, if it please thee, I will get me back again. He knew that the Lord was standing in his way. He knew the Lord was displeased with him. He knew. He said, if you, he said, if it please thee, I will get me back again. And people say this. Christians say this. You know the Lord is calling you out of it. And you still come to the Lord. If you want me. Show me, give me a sign, spoil it, scatter it. You know deep down that the Lord is calling you out of it. But you keep praying a prayer that is not from the sincerity of your heart. Your way is perverse before the Lord. And he wants to help you. Come out of it. Whatsoever business deal, come out of it. Whatsoever ministry that you feel you want to go into and the Lord has not called you into it. Maybe you've gone into it because of gain. Maybe you're going into it because of those people calling you for sponsorship. That will sponsor you if you start up this or that. Have you heard from the Lord? Is the Lord permitting you? Lord granted you the access. Come out of it. And he, the angel gave him away. He said, okay, go. Go with the men. And he went. 
and he got there and he met Balak. Covetousness is a very subtle, dangerous, and deadly sin. The scripture equates it with idolatry. Bible believers are warned, take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possessed. Interestingly, Balaam acknowledged his sin but failed to repent. Do you know when people acknowledge their sin, they fail to repent? Sometimes I have sinned, but they continue in that act. I know this is sin. Why not repent? I will, but not now. I pray the Lord will deliver those people in Jesus' name. If you're still in perverseness, <laughs> you're still in sin, why not come now? Turn to the Lord. If He's pointing it to you through this medium, through this study, pointing your sins to you, why not turn? away from it now let's come to the next point point number two preservation and blessedness of the chosen preservation and blessedness of the chosen come to the text in numbers chapter 23 and balaam said unto balak build me here three altars and prepare me here seven oxen and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had spoken. And Balak and Balaam offered on every altar a bullock and a ram. He went on to make sacrifices just to curse the people of Israel. Balak said, come up, I'll take you to a high place where you'll be able to see the people camping. See them in their tents i want you to pronounce curses on them and balaam said unto balak stand by the burnt offering and i will go for eventually the lord will come to meet me and whatsoever he show up me i will tell thee and he went to a high place he went to a place where he'll be able to commune with the lord to hear what the lord will say to him and the Lord said to him, Whatsoever I put in your mouth, thou shalt speak. Come to verse 7. And he took up his parable and said, Balak, the king of Moabat, have brought me from Aram out of the mountains of the east, saying, Come, curse me, Jacob, and come and defy Israel. How shall I curse whom God had not cursed? Are you scared of the enchantment of the people, the curses? You said, I don't even know who took my name to one of these native doctors or to do juju or whatsoever, sending arrows to my life or my family. Are you sure you're standing firm in the word of the Lord? Are you, are you sure that you're in a good time with God? Is your, is your life pleasing the Lord? If your life is pleasing the Lord, how shall they curse who the Lord had not cursed? And from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. Lo, the people shall dwell alone and shall not be reckoned among the nations. That's what the Lord said. Peculiar nation holy priesthood royal priesthood the lord has called us to be different distinct peculiar a holy nation a peculiar people a royal priesthood they shall not reckon among the nations no they are different from the world you are separated from them. Who can count the dust of Jacob and number the fourth part of Israel? Let me die 
the death of the righteous and let my last end be like his. This is Balaam seeing the end of the righteous. Say, let me die the death of the righteous. See, if you don't live the life of the righteous, how do you die the death of the righteous? If you ask sinners, they'll say, that, yes, I want to go to, do you want to go to heaven? Yes. But they don't want to live the life of the righteous. And they want to spend eternity with the righteous. Say, let me die the death of the righteous. In verse 18, and he took up his parable and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear, hacking unto me, thou son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Had he said, and shall he not do it? Or had he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandments to bless. And he had blessed, and I cannot reverse it. Your enemy will not reverse your blessings. They don't have the right. The Lord has blessed you. He has said tremendous, wonderful things about you. And they cannot reverse it verse 21 he had not beheld iniquity in jacob neither had he seen perverseness in israel that is the only criteria to receive the blessings of god holiness within and without holiness right stand with god he has not found perverseness in israel the Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. Now let's come to the third point. Point number three. Prophecies concerning Christ's kingdom and calamities of the heathen. Come to the next chapter in chapter 24 of the book of Numbers, and I read from verse 1. And when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he went not as at other times to seek for enchantment, but he set his face towards the wilderness. And Balaam lifted up his eyes, and he saw Israel abiding in his tents, according to their tribes, and the Spirit of God came on him. And he took up his parable and said, Balaam the son of Beor had said, and the man whose eyes are open had said, the Lord opened his eyes. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him and he saw Israel. Israel was unaware at this point. They didn't even know what was going on. They didn't know that Balak, Balaam, they were trying to curse them. They didn't even know the battles the Lord was fighting for them. How many battles do you know? The Lord is fighting for you. He said, I will fight. You shall hold your peace. I will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. The Lord is keeping you, protecting you. When you lean on him and all you have to do is be holy, have a right stand with him, be in good terms with God, and he will fight for you. He will protect you. The Israelites were unaware of these at this point, but yet the Lord was fighting for them. Come to verse 11. Therefore now flee thou to thy place. I thought to promote thee unto great honor, but lo, the Lord had kept thee back from honor. That's what the devil says to the people. When you overcome temptations, when you say no to the deceits of the devil he comes back to tell you that the lord had kept you from honor from riches he wants you to sign that document to look at you you just missed out a great sum of money look at your mates building houses buying houses look at your families and you are here 
claiming to be a child of God, claiming to be holy, claiming to be steadfast. Look at them. The Lord has kept you back from honor. But I say to you, the Lord has great plan for you. He will keep you. He will protect you. He will bless you mightily. Still, he kept on speaking, blessing the people. In verse 17, he had said, which heard the words of God and knew the knowledge of the Most High which saw the vision of the almighty falling into a trance but having his eyes open i shall see him but not now i shall behold him but not nigh there shall come a star out of jacob and a scepter shall rise out of israel and shall smite the corners of moab and destroy the children of Sheth. Christ is the bright and the morning star. The bright and the morning star and also the scepter. He said, I shall see him, but not now. But not now. He said, I shall see him. But the question is, you shall see him spending eternity with him or see him when you stand with the small and the great and stand before God, before the George Christ. And the Bible says, and the books were opened and the other book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Bilam shall see him, shall be judged according to his works. As you read further in the book of Numbers, you would know how Bilam died, whether he died. The death of the righteous or the death of the unrighteous. But either way, he said, I shall see him. My brother, either way, you will see him. Whether you spend eternity with him or at the great white throne judgment. The question is, are you saved? Why not talk to the Lord? We've seen his word. Elam's covetousness and prophecies. Are you covetous? Is your heart engulfed with covetousness? That the Lord is speaking to you and you find it hard to obey. All you see is the gain. You run greedily like Balaam. When I say, Lord, help me. I bring my heart to you. Is there any perverseness in me? Forgive me. I turn away. I go away. I come out of it. Is there any marriage? A marriage that is not in line with the will of God. Why not come out of it? Are you sincere? Whenever you go to the Lord or there is an idol in your heart. Say, Lord, have mercy. Forgive me. Help me. Help me. The Lord loves you. And sometimes those chaos, those casualties and calamities might be a medium the Lord is using to speak to you. Say, Lord, help me. 
take away covetousness from my heart. Forgive me. I turn away. Don't speak like Balaam. I said, if, if you're not pleased, I'll get, my, I'll get me back. In his heart, and he knew that the Lord was not pleased. Don't be like Balaam. If you say, Lord, I turn. Please turn. If you say, Lord, forgive me. I will not walk in that path anymore. Say it from the deepest part of your heart. Mean what you say to the Lord. And the Lord will help you. Father, we've seen your word. We've seen the life of Bela. And we've seen how he was covetous. How he ran after a game. Lord, we ask that you open our eyes to see us as you, as you see us. You open our eyes to see ourselves the way you see us. Help us, because that is the way the devil brings deception and temptation, because we are ignorant of your promises and your plans for us. And the devil comes to entice us, lie to us, and deceive us. But your grace is sufficient for us to always overcome. Lord, we ask that you give us more grace to stand firm, more power to abide, more zeal you give to us, strength to be steadfast you give to us and to remain and to lean in your promises. Whatever you've promised us, Lord, do as thou hast said. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. God bless you.